Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This week we get four stories, and the first one is a drone pilot that was cited for flying his drone too fast, and we have him on the show to talk about it. We'll talk about tracking volcanoes using drones, and we have a lot of DJI updates as we're coming back from DJI Airworks in Las Vegas. And first one is added RC compatibility. We have DJI that was blacklisted yet again after talking about this for two years. And then we have a, an update on the Mavic 3 Classic, so let's get to it. And our first story this week is a drone pilot that needs your help and our help. Uh, Paul is one of our students actually here at Pilot Institute and uh, he got into a little bit of trouble when flying in New York. He was flying over a lake, flying his FPV, DJI FPV, and then was accosted by a police officer that was on the boat. And then they told him that he couldn't be flying so low and so fast over the lake. Uh, unfortunately, Paul uh, decided to uh, tell them that uh, that wasn't the case. And then uh, that made the police officer a little bit mad. So they decided to give him a ticket after spending quite a bit of time trying to figure out what they would cite him for. And uh, so we brought Paul on board here today and he's gonna tell us a little bit more about uh, the, the ticket that he he received and, and what it is and then now what he has to do which is show up in court for uh, quite a few things and then he needs our help because uh, unfortunately the state has decided to kind of uh, take him as a target and so he started a, a GoFundMe campaign but Paul uh, tell us a little bit more about um, all the, uh, the the issues that you're being faced with now after flying your drone legally. Well first I want to say thank you Greg for having me on the show and give me a chance to explain. Um, basically, I was flying my drone and uh, a cop stopped me and he wasn't too happy when I was trying to explain to him that, um, that I was following the rules to flying. And um, he was so upset that he decided to write me a ticket and he couldn't figure out what he was going to write on the ticket. So he uh, spent some time on the phone with his supervisor, uh, quite a bit of time actually, and ended up citing me for New York Penal Code Law 120.20, which is reckless endangerment in the second degree. It's a misdemeanor charge. I'm facing a year in jail and I believe a potential thousand dollar fine. I was on vacation in New York at the time. I'm from Massachusetts and part of the issue I have is I'm disabled with mobility issues and uh, that makes it really difficult to make that trip to New York in one day. It's 10 hours round trip. So part of the issue I've run into was the court didn't want to recognize my um, Americans with Disabilities Act reasonable accommodation. But I just received a email and they're finally they they adjourned the last hearing which was supposed to be on the 12th they adjourned it until the 9th of next month where they're going to address my accommodation so it's a step in the right direction yeah and so you and i have been talking in the behind the scene for quite a while now about this issue since it happened and um and then you finally decided that uh, you need counsel so you you're trying to hire an attorney at this stage and so uh you started a, a campaign uh, where where are you at with the defense have you been able to talk to someone at this stage so i've reached out to an attorney stiegel out of new york who specializes in drones and reckless endangerment law i haven't heard back from them yet but i'm hoping to hear back from them soon I'm going to give him a call this afternoon and hopefully make contact with a the person there and uh, we'll go from awesome. there. But I have not obtained legal counsel as of yet. As of yet. So uh, this is what the funds for the GoFundMe campaign uh, is going to be. So as we uh, as you go forward with this, w was there anything in there that you uh, with the interaction with the flight and everything, anything that you learned that you would have done different or would recommend to people that they do in the future? I think that it's important for people to realize that you have to be real cautious when you challenge uh, a police officer's authority. Um, and and maybe my interaction with the officer could have been handled differently. I yeah. think that's important. But your flight, order. I mean, I, I reviewed your flight and, and we talked about this from day one. You had a visual observer, which quite frankly, uh, kudos to you because most people fly out there uh, FPV without a visual observer. Uh, and then uh, you were flying in an open space that, you know, you had checked the airspace, you'd done everything. So, yeah, I think it's uh, there, there's a bad precedent that can be set here with your case, which is why uh, I think it's important for you to, to fight this in court and use a lawyer for this because uh, otherwise the state can be overreaching and, and decide, you know, some, some of the stuff that they mentioned in their documentation is just not right. So um, I, I really I really wish we the best. I know we're going to keep talking about this on the back end and, uh, and, and make sure that uh, this happens correctly and that you, you get uh, the, the, the proper treatment from, uh, from the state of New York. But we'll put a link down in the description here uh, for people that want to donate to the GoFundMe campaign and, and, and help Paul uh, with his defense. And, and hopefully this is a win for the community. I see this as a community battle at this stage. Um, Anything else you want to add, Paul? 
Yeah, to all the people that have already donated to the GoFundMe, I really appreciate it. My family really appreciates it. And for anybody who donates in the future, uh, I, I thank you so very much. And I will always put updates there as to what's going on with the case um, so you're not left in the dark. And uh, if you have any other questions, you know, you can reach out to me. I'm available. Awesome. Well, thanks, Paul. Good luck. Thank you, Greg. All right, the next story this week is drones being used to track volcanoes. This is happening in Hawaii. Uh, they're trying to track and map different eruptions at volcanoes. Uh, this is the USGS, the US Geological Survey, uh, that is using, it looks like, M600 in order to uh, observe different craters. Uh, they say that they have a special permit to conduct the, uh, the, the official UAS mission. Uh, we'll put a link down in the description so you can see everything they're doing, and it's, uh, it's actually pretty cool. All right, the last story this week, and this is a bunch of stories put together, uh, DJI is adding RC compatibility. Uh, there's a leak that suggested that uh, the DJI RC, which is the, the smaller one and the gray one that comes with the Mavic, uh, the Mini 3 Pro, uh, will soon be compatible with the Air 2S. I think this is actually great news. I think all of their different controllers need to be compatible with a lot of different things. Uh, we were at Airworks this week, uh, meeting with a lot of our friends from the industry. We actually had a talk about this uh, kind of predicting that the new Mavic 3 uh, Classic that would be coming out pretty soon apparently uh, possibly would come with this DJI RC which would only make sense. Now this is only speculation on our part but we think it does make sense to have a cheaper Mavic 3 version uh, that would come with a cheaper controller so that people can actually fly this drone. Uh, the leak was provided by someone online deals drone and is expected to be released uh, on the DJI website pretty soon. Uh, drone Excel, our friend Haya who's actually in the studio with us today uh, coming to visit uh, has a, a great article on this. Uh, also DJI in the news for being blacklisted again. Uh, I had students reach out to me and I said, what does this mean to us? And I, I had to look it up because DJI has been on the blacklist technically for uh, quite a while. Uh, the government upped it up a little bit with the Department of Defense basically saying that DJI is the equivalent of a Chinese military company. Uh, the ban on all DOD Department of Defense departments uh, can't use DJI drones and even buy them uh, in order to use for official purposes. And now this is not something obviously that affects the civilian, so you can still fly your DJI drone, no problem, but if you plan on working with uh, the DOD, then well, you're gonna need to have something else. And then, uh, like I said, we just came back from Airworks. Uh, there was a ton of really cool things that we saw out there. Uh, Haya and I are gonna sit down actually uh, for a special Pixel Drone Show edition where we're gonna talk about what we saw and the trends that we saw and all the cool things uh, that, uh, that we discussed while we were there. Uh, the show is pretty small compared to some of the big conferences that we go to, but it was great to actually meet in person with a lot of DJI people that we talk to uh, on a regular, well, not on a regular basis, because we don't, uh, that we talk to quite a bit uh, when uh, new releases come around and all these things because we always have questions so um, yeah just an overall great event and like I said we'll have a, a full recap uh, when we uh, do that on the Pixel drone show next week and lastly something that actually was not announced when we were at Airworks but uh, it looks like the Mavic 3 Classic is going to be released pretty soon and it looks like it's going to be less than $1,400 uh, according to Haya Drone Excel uh, it looks like the uh, release date would be October 27th some of the specs that were leaked is the 5.1 video that you find on the uh, traditional uh, Mavic 3. I don't even know what we would call it now. We have a Mavic 3, we have a Mavic 3 Cine, Mavic 3 Classic, Mavic 3 Enterprise, Thermal, uh, there's just uh, so many different options, but this would be the Mavic 3 Classic. It looks like they would be getting rid of the zoom lens to only come with one uh, lens, which quite frankly, um, People love the regular sensor, the micro four third sensor uh, with the 5.1K video. Uh, people don't care so much about having the zoom lens. So I think this is actually pretty much what the drone should have been from day one. But we'll see, we'll see when it comes out. We'll give you more information when that happens. And that's it, that's all I have for you this week. As always, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.